Hello, everybody. How are you doing? We're back to our regular Wednesday routine, and I'm feeling really, really good about that. Uh, you know, I was talking with a colleague yesterday and saying that I finally felt like I had my head kind of wrapped around this new reality. And I'm actually feeling like you do too, based on the comments that I'm getting and the questions that are coming forward. Um, so, you know, just feeling like things are ready to get back to normal. So I thought we'd go back to our regular normal Wednesday at noon. So I'm glad to have all of you join me, whether it is live or whether you're watching the archived version. And that actually, this whole business of getting back to normal prompted the topic that I want to talk to you about today. You know, it is said that it takes six weeks for us to establish a new habit. It's kind of where we are now with this whole self-isolation, shopping differently, maintaining physical distance, learning to socialize in new ways. So six weeks, we're establishing new habits. Not bad. With so much out of our control, though, it's nice to be able to find the silver lining and control those things that we can control. And any of you who have watched this show for a while or read anything that I've written will know that I am huge on self-advocacy. We have to advocate for ourselves, and there is no better time to be doing that than now when we have to really figure out new ways to do life. So for those of you who are just joining us, the topic today is the fact that we are six weeks into this, for us anyway, here in Canada, longer if you're in Europe, and we're finding our new normal. We're finding some balance, and I am very much finding that in my life now. You know, finding things that we can control and acting on them make us feel stronger and give us a, a better sense of purpose. So all of the cleaning that we're doing, weeding out our closets and finding things that we no longer need since we're at home. Those are the kinds of things that I'm hearing a lot of people are doing. Scratch cooking. You know, it's making a huge comeback. I remember in the early days of self-isolation, when I would go to the grocery store, I was quite startled at the things that were in people's shopping carts. They were ready-made meals, prepared meals, instead of ingredients with which to make meals at home. Now, of course, that has changed. Now people are buying ingredients and they are cooking at home. Leave your comments below if any of this stuff is resonating with you, and we'll see them on the side here. But things like flour are now very difficult to find as people are doing more baking at home instead of buying bags of cookies, for instance. Um, you know, just that business of trying out new recipes. We're finding different ways of exercising at home, too. There are lots of very popular YouTube videos. Um, I see lots of advice around finding the things in your home that you can use as weights and as resistance. So, you know, boxes of dish detergent. Or kitty litter, you know, boxes of kitty litter, they're quite weighty. You can use those as a weight and do some, some pull-ups with your arms. But I'm seeing all kinds of advice about that online. So, you know, that kind of stuff is really becoming very popular. Since we can't get out and move, we are now figuring out that we need to move. So we're figuring that all out, aren't we? Um, crafting. Crafting. How many of you are crafters? I confess I'm not a crafter, but I am seeing lots of pictures in my Facebook feed of people who are finding all of those bits and pieces of materials and, oh, I don't know, quilts and the quilts that are no longer used and clothing that's no longer used that they are making quilts out of. I really love the idea of finding um, bits of clothing, and I'm seeing this with people who have passed on. They're finding, you know, grandpa's favorite shirt or mom's favorite blouse, and they're taking pieces of it 
and making quilts out of it so that in a way it keeps them very close. I really liking that idea. As I say, I'm not a crafter, but I sure do admire people who are finding ways to do this sort of stuff. Knitting, sewing, all kinds of needle crafts. I'm seeing that in my Facebook feed more and more as the days go on. We're returning to some of the hobbies of days of yore, if you will. Doing things for others, like leaving a covered dish on a porch or sharing some baking calling an elderly neighbor to say, just how you doing? How you doing? Do you need anything? Are you doing well? Can I go pick up your prescriptions for you? Can I shop for you? Um, you know, picking up groceries for people who are homebound is, is really a very vital service. Makes you feel good to do something for someone else too. I've heard from people who are reconnecting with folks they haven't talked with in a long time. And not just friends that you see now and then, but actually going back to high school friends, finding them on Facebook and reconnecting with them. I think that's actually kind of fun to see how people are doing. It's kind of like uh, that high school reunion, only virtually. How about discovering new shows or rediscovering old ones? You know what I've been watching a lot of is M.A.S.H., right? The old Alan Alda series, MASH. It's on some of the um, TV show channels, the older TV show channels. I've been loving it. And maybe not coincidentally, it's a show about people who were finding ways to endure hard times, although nothing in a wartime compares with what we're doing now, certainly. I don't mean to suggest that, but MASH is a really fun show. How many of you watched the Disney sing-along last week? I did. I absolutely loved it. I loved the uh, the words being scrolled along the bottom of the screen and the Mickey Mouse head that was bouncing. If you have a chance to watch that, I'm not sure if they're going to stream it on the new Disney channel or if it's going to be replayed at some point. But if you do come across it, big, big fun to watch that. Of course, the companies like Amazon and the HelloFresh meal delivery services are making out like bandits in this time. However, there are plenty of people who are supporting local restaurants by investing in their takeout services and uh, you know ordering that takeout to keep the business alive. I do worry about what the main street in my town is going to look like when all this is over, for sure. Services online like SideDoor.Access have found a way to bring arts and entertainment to us and still pay the entertainers, which is fabulous. If you think about it, the singers who have had to cancel concerts, and I'm not talking about the big name singers, you know, I'm sure they've got a penny or two stashed away, but the, the people who do the, the rounds of the smaller venues, you know, those people are completely without. Uh, any income these days. There's a Canadian folk singer named Danny Michelle who has been doing uh, concerts on SideDoor.Access and the tickets are $7. $7! I have paid probably seven times that to see this entertainer in concert. Danny Michelle is his name, folk singer. Um, anyway, Apparently, 10% of that $7 ticket goes to SideDoor.Access as their commission, which means that the balance goes to the entertainer. How good is that? And I mean, he's he has a large following, so he does a show every Sunday from his home studio. So I'm sure he's uh, finding that income something that he's very grateful for. Entertainers, of course, are connecting with their their communities online, some of the big names, Michael Bublé and his wife, Luciana Lupato, huge fan of them. She is on her uh, Instagram live channel. He is on his Facebook live channel. And five days a week, they do a show. And they've got this all figured out. Uh, Mondays, they do cooking. Tuesdays, they do exercise. I mean, they've got it all figured out. And uh, this Monday, actually, they did um, they did cooking. They baked bagels. 
that only had four ingredients. And I think you can actually do it with two if you have self-rising self flour. But it's basically all-purpose flour, yogurt, baking powder, and salt. So if you have self-rising flour, you just need the flour and the yogurt. They showed how to make these bagels. Apparently it's a thing. I didn't know because I'm not much of a baker, but you know, I'm going to try it. I, for 100%, I'm going to try it. I have baking powder on my shopping list for the next time I go and get an order from the grocery store. Businesses all over the place are also figuring out how to do business with some new techniques that may well be useful to them going forward. I was talking with a colleague yesterday, and he normally does uh, client visits, which can require him to drive two hours one way. So he's driving two hours, he's visiting with his client, and then he's driving two hours back. Zoom had been on his to-do list for a couple of years, but now he's having to do it. And we had our meeting yesterday on Zoom, only it was it was my account that we used because I use it a lot. And anyway, so he is now figuring out that going forward, he can be much more efficient in his business by doing some of his client visits using Zoom. Not every client is happy with that, of course. In a more normal existence, they want to see you in person. But in these new normal times, this is the way to do it. So, you know, he's finding new ways of doing his business that are going to leave him a little bit more free to work harder for his clients because he doesn't have to spend all that time in his car. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm actually enjoying this business of learning to respect science again. Are you noticing that? Science is being respected again. We are turning to our public health officers. We are turning to scientists who are at the front lines of this pandemic and paying attention to what they're saying about um, this virus and what it will take to get a vaccine and how long it's going to take. And, you know, these are not politicians. These, these are not politicians. These are scientists who are very fact-based in what they're doing. And I'm really enjoying the resurgence of the respect for these scientists. This being Earth Day, I would be very remiss if I didn't point out the fact that we are noticing, and scientists are telling us, that the air is cleaner, 30% cleaner in some places, that we are seeing dolphins and jellyfish in the canals in Venice, Italy, that penguins are walking down the streets of Cape Town, South Africa, that kangaroos are hopping through the cities in Australia because there aren't people there. We aren't polluting the environments. Uh, there are no contrails in the sky either because there are very few aircraft in the sky. I think it's really nice to see that as citizens, we have a solution to help the earth repair itself. And we're seeing that in action right now. We're seeing that it actually doesn't take as long as we may have thought it takes. Some of the repairs are happening very quickly. Not all of them. I mean, a 30% um, cleaner air is 30% better, but it's nowhere near 100% better. So there's more that we can do. But I'm really encouraged by the fact that we can actually see this happening. So as we are six weeks into self-isolation, as I said, longer in Europe, but six weeks for me, what kinds of habits do you think you are going to take with you when the restrictions are relaxed? Do you think that there are some things that you'll be able to do better, do differently, get a better handle on, organize your life around differently? Do you think you're learning some new things? I know I am. I'm 100% learning some new things. I don't think I'm going to be ordering from the meal delivery services. I do think I will do better at cooking from home. I do think I have learned some things about how to run my business better. And I do think I am learning some ways to be a better citizen. So 
you know, there may be smaller takeaways for me as we move forward, but I'm curious to know what you think. What are you going to do differently? What are you learning from this that makes your life a better place to be? What do you think? This thing keeps popping up in front of my screen, and I know you don't see it, but you see me looking away to try to fix it. <laughs> anyway, leave your comments below and tell me what you're learning to do better, what you're going to take away from this experience that will enhance your life. I left a, um, a poll on our Facebook page. If you scroll down, you will see it about using various platforms to shop online because I was hearing stories that really concerned me about older adults who are losing some independence because they are having to depend on adult children or neighbors or friends to go and get their groceries for them because they can't really make head nor tails of how to order online at grocery stores. And if they could figure it out, then they could do that ordering online and then they could just simply go to the store themselves and do curbside pickup. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about the loss of independence and, you know, maybe there's a lesson there for some of these larger stores or for libraries, libraries do this as a matter of course, teaching um, computer platforms to people. Maybe there is a lesson to be taken away from that, that we could better prepare older adults by teaching them not just how to do email and, and video chatting online, but how to use very specific platforms to make their lives easier. What do you think about that? Anyway, you can answer the poll down below. I think we have a pretty savvy group because most of the people are saying, yeah, I got this. Only a handful of people have said, I don't know how to do it. So let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Tell me what your takeaways are from this time that will make your life a better place. I don't want to know about the negative because the negative isn't going to impact your life going forward. You're not going to you're not going to take any of those negative experiences going forward. You're going to revert to your previous habits going forward as quickly as you possibly can, I'm sure. But tell me what you have learned that you will take to enhance or improve your life going forward. I will look forward to chatting with you next Wednesday at 12 noon right here on facebook.com forward slash the oldish. And until then, take care of one another. And please do remember that it takes a village to age a senior.